Hello everybody, this is The Horror Sickness and I'm back with part 2 of my collection overview and as promised in the previous video, if you have seen it, no blabbering, no going on, we're just going to get straight into it and if you have seen that one you'll also know that we're going to be starting with American Psycho. Um, American Psycho from 2000, um, shocking really, 12 years old. I really like this one, I know that it gets uh, mixed reviews and that a lot of the negative reviews seem to be based around the fact that it doesn't stick uh, that close to the source material, to the book. Um, I haven't read it so I can't look at the film in that way um, but just as a film in itself I really enjoyed this one. I think Christian Bale is absolutely fantastic um, and the scene especially with the business cards, I know there's some great scenes in it, the music is fantastic um, but the scene with the business cards where they're all sat there kind of showing off basically mine's bigger and better than yours um, is just an absolutely brilliant scene, so well written, well acted um, I love it. There you go. That's just me. Next up, we have, if I can get this one out, uh, An American Werewolf in London from 1981. Um, this is the special edition with a slip cover, um, which we can take a look at in a second, actually. Uh, I'm not going to ramble on about this one. The transformation scene, you all know it, is absolutely fantastic. And even after 30 odd years, uh, it still holds up. Kind of looks absolutely just brilliant. A leaflet, but just... It's not really a booklet, um, but it's pretty cool. Just give some information about the film and have some pictures there of the director and cast and everything else. So, pretty cool. Um, next up, it's this little kind of sleeve um, that it comes in. It's like a little plastic cover which just has all the writing on and everything else. As you can see, it's the 21st anniversary special edition. I've seen ones that look the same as this but don't have uh, that on it. It's just, um, yeah. So, as you can see, the front cover ends up kind of plain um, and it folds out. You've got your two discs. Um, as you fold it there, you've got like a little thing there for the <coughs> uh, sheet that goes in. And if we turn it over and look at the back, the two discs, plenty of extras, um, access commentary behind the scenes, outtakes, interviews with a lot of the people. There's some storyboarding and technical effects, special effects, things on there. So, yeah, definitely worth picking up if you can get this. I'm sure it's pretty readily available and pretty cheap. Um, I'd say it's not the most special edition before, but I've seen, but... Yeah, still pretty decent, so let's get back to the collection. Yeah, so as you can see, pretty decent addition there. I'm sure there's better ones out there, but I do quite like it. Next one up is the original Amateurville Horror uh, from back 79, I think, or 80. Um, it's not the best. I'm not the biggest fan of the Amateurville Horror series in general, um, and that's why I don't really have any of the follow-ups. I have seen them. I've seen a couple of them. They go downhill from this one, and as I say, I'm not the biggest fan of this anyway, so yeah, didn't really bother picking them up. Um, next up, having said that, we do have the Amityville Horror Remake um, from mid-2000. Um, it's actually one of the few remakes that I prefer to the original. Um, as I say, I'm not a big fan of the Amityville um, series in general anyway, but I actually prefer this one. I think Ryan Reynolds... Uh, does really good in this one. Um, once he starts getting possessed and he's getting angry with the kids and his wife and everything, I think some of the things he does, some of the facial expressions and some of the things he says are just absolutely hilarious. Um, and it's it's actually a pretty decent film. I quite enjoyed it. Um, so yeah, definitely better than the original. Next up we have Amusement um, from a few years ago. Um, Still not got around to watching this one yet, but again, I need to thank somebody, Sean Winterking1967. He sent me this um, a little while ago. The basic premise is that three women have been stalked by a killer um, with a grudge that extends back to the girls' childhoods. Um, I'll let you know once I've watched it. I definitely need to get around to watching this. I have a huge stack of films uh, that I haven't been able to watch yet. Sean, thank you very much for sending me that one. I will get to watch it very soon. Next up, we have Apartment 1303, uh, again from a few years back. It's your typical J-horror, really. Uh, nothing new, nothing special, but it's, it's not a bad watch. Um, there is a Hollywood remake due out this year, I believe, um, and it's called Apartment 1303 3D. Um, yeah, with Misha Barton. Um, that... Goal girl, she, Misha Barton is the girl, um, I believe I'm right in saying, the girl that threw up on the sixth sense, the girl that kept vomiting, and um, I'm pretty sure that's her, and Rebecca De Mornay, um is in the remake as well, um, but come on Hollywood, for God's sake, just remake anything. Um, next up we have Apocalypse of the Dead, um, also known as Zone of the Dead, I believe, over in America. Um, it's pretty piss poor, to be fair. Um, my brother's bought it 
um, our James and Robert, <laughs> and um, they watched it and then pounded it off on me thinking, you know, so I took it and yeah, it's poor. I've watched it once and I probably won't watch it again. Um, oh, if anyone would like to trade, <laughs> you can give me a shout, leave a comment. Next up, we have April Fool's Day from 1986. I've not got around to watching this yet, but I know I have seen it in the past, um, a long time ago. I remember the premise of it. I've mentioned it um, in a few comments and different things in past videos, how it all ends. I won't spoil it for anyone if you haven't seen it, um, but I definitely need to watch this one again. Um, obviously, I have to thank Andrew Bellina. This was part of his contest, so he sent me this as one of the uh, winnings from his contest. So... Thank you very much to Andrew Bellina and I will get around to watching this very soon and yeah next up a massive favourite of mine um, this is from 1999 I'm going to talk a little bit about this one if you just bear with me this is Audition um, I'm assuming that 99% of the people that watch this are going to know it um, but for those that don't um, make sure you go and get to know it very soon um, it's a big big favourite of mine as I say and it's the perfect example of a payoff. Um, if you're going to make a film that is basically 90% of the movie is building up to something, um, then the payoff, the ending, um, has to be absolutely brilliant. And this does it fantastically. Um, if you haven't seen it and you do end up watching this one, you will, like everyone else, you'll watch it and you will remember the last 15 minutes. Please, if you do anything... After you've done that, remember the last 15 minutes, that's fine, but go back and re-watch it a few times because you'll find that there's actually a great overall film. Um, the film as a whole is brilliant. Um, Takeshi Miike, the director, is one of my favourite directors. And yes, films like Visit a Q um, are more disturbing, I suppose. Each of the killer, um, probably a lot more violent and bloody. Um, but I've got to say, and I don't know if that many people will agree with me, but this for me is my personal favourite of Takeshi Miike. I think it's absolutely fantastic and if you've not seen it definitely go and check it out next up we have this is actually a killer double feature and it has bad dreams and visiting hours on there it's an 80s horror double uh bad dreams is from the late 80s i believe and as far as i can remember visiting hours is earlier it's like the beginning or mid 80s um Bad Dreams is pretty good um basically a, a cult group commit mass suicide um, one girl survives I think her name was Cynthia, um, if I'm remembering rightly. Um, she ends up in a coma and after about 13 years she comes out of that and can't remember um, anything about what she'd been through. And then a psychiatrist tries to help her. Um, I won't say any more about it but it's, it's definitely worth checking out if you can get a copy of it. Uh, next up, Visiting Hours. On this one a journalist gets attacked um, but survives. And I do remember the name of the person on this, Colt Hawker, which I just think is a brilliant name. Um, finds out that he didn't manage to kill her and then goes in to try and finish her off. It's a decent film. Um, what I've got to say about this one is that Visiting Hours has got one of the best, probably the best, trailer for any horror film I've ever seen. Um, I'm definitely going to leave the link to it in the description below. Please go and check it out. Uh, the trailer is absolutely fantastic. It's so 80s, but... They put so much effort into it, and for me, it's a perfect trailer for a horror film. Um, definitely worth picking up if you can manage to get the killer double feature. Um, I think you can get it fairly cheap on Amazon. Um, I think it's on Amazon UK for around about £10, I believe. Uh, but yeah, worth picking up. Uh, next up is Battle Royale. Um, everybody knows it again. Most people love it. Um, it can be one of them films, and I've seen a lot of people mention this, that you enjoy the more you watch it. Um, I know a few people who weren't keen on it the first time around, but then after they watched it a few times, they actually really enjoyed it. The other thing I know is, as a Westerner, we probably look at this film in a different way. Um, we judge it, obviously, on its plot and the violence and everything else that it's kind of known for. Um, but I know there's a whole bucket load of kind of social commentary and everything else, so you can read into it what you want, but... You can either just sit back, uh, this is what I do like about it, you can sit back and you can enjoy it just as a, a bit of a gore film and some action and everything else, or you can actually spend the time to to get to know um, what it was like there at that time and the social commentary and what it is that the film's trying to tell you. It's a lot deeper than what you might think initially. Um, but yeah, as I say, you can enjoy it either way, um, which it just makes for a really great film. That's Battle Royale. And next up we have Battle Royale 2. Um, 
probably no surprise, nowhere near as good as the first film. Um, I'm assuming again, if you've watched the first one, you've probably watched the second one. There is one thing that I did find out a while ago um, that I do want to mention. It, it probably goes to justify why it's not anywhere near as good as the first one. The director of the first that actually started uh, pre-production on this one um, with cancer. Um, he had acute cancer uh, when they were planning to make it. So what they did was the director's son um, was put in place so that if anything happened to him, his son would take over the direction of the film. Um, he actually directed one scene of the film and then passed away, so his son then took over, which it kind of shows for me. I know it's going to sound harsh, but it's pretty poorly directed. Um, and I just can't understand how the son could then go ahead once his father's died and just carry on with the film. But there you go, they kind of agreed on that. So it seems a little bizarre to me, but there you go. Um, his dad passed away and he took over the filming. That's what they wanted to do. Um, these two additions, we'll take a quick look at... Um, at the end of the video I'm gonna leave it there for now I think we've gone through one two three four five six seven eight nine ten actually done twelve so we've done one more than last time uh, thank you very much for watching folks as I say we're gonna take a quick look at those two editions of Battle Royale and Battle Royale 2 because um, they are a little bit different and I will see you in part three hopefully hopefully enjoying it please leave some comments um, let me know what you think. Um, all the descriptions to trailers and links and all the things I've mentioned will be below. Please go and check out Andrew Bellina as well. And that's it from me. Thank you very much for watching. Take it easy, everybody. Okay, folks, just going to take a quick look at the additions of the Battle Royale and Battle Royale 2 that I have. Uh, the first one comes in this little slip cover. Um, it's really quite simple. I just quite like it. Um, picked it up from Malaysia and it was 14 90 which is about £3. Um, so pretty cheap, I just thought it was pretty cool and it was probably an addition that not a lot of people would have. Um, it is bare bones, I've mentioned it in the past, Malaysia doesn't really go for special editions. Um, they have a big thing about bootleg and stuff over there, so it's pretty rare to find anything kind of decent over there. Um, this, I do want to mention, is backwards, so I don't know why they've done it that way, um, but it's pretty much the same as the slip cover um, and the back's the same as well. But yeah, just pretty cool. It's got the kind of um, the shiny bit there. Um, next up, we have Battle Royale 2. Again, picked up from Malaysia for the same price with the kind of shiny bit at the top. Um, again, same premise. Not going to go in and open it up. But slip cover with the same on the inside and it's backwards and everything else. I picked up another one of Battle Royale 2 uh, while I was in Singapore. Uh, this is two disc, um, but it's all in foreign. I have no idea what's on there. I've not really watched this version of it just yet. It is a slip um, cover. Again, they don't really do that much special to it. It's just basically the same um, as you can see. But yeah, just thought it'd be interesting to show that. The disc's a little bit different from what you might usually see. Um, I will see you yeah. hopefully in part three. Take it easy everybody.